Get your uh, voice, or get your attention, doesn't it? Uh, my name is Evolve. I am director, producer, <laughs> writer. Uh, I'm just having fun. I'm just having a blast. Just like these microphones. Anyway, so I want to thank you all for coming to the Rogue Playhouse. Here in wonderful Gold Beach, Oregon. Ellensburg Theater Company is proud to present Tales from Wherever, a wonderful Halloween extravaganza of epic proportions and zombified delights. So, there are two things. Well, actually one, because this is the last performance after all. First off, please turn on your cell phone. They are annoying, they are a pest, they are a modern convenience. They are so awesome that I wish I could throw mine out the window every time I get in my car. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, they are too expensive, therefore I keep them alive. The second one would normally be a rule, but since this is the last show of the run, I'm going to say it anyway. Go ahead and spoil it. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody about the ending. It's great, it's awesome, it's wonderful, it's magical and delicious. So! Now that all of the verbal fun has finally ended, let's bring out our performers! <laughs> our sound booth performers, our crew, and the narrator. Once I get off and turn off this delightful Halloween music, we shall begin. And of course the lights are going to go off, so be prepared. Be prepared. extravaganza of terrors and horror, tales of ghoulish and irreprehensible delights, purple wanderings of scares and dares. Welcome to Tales from Wherever! <laughs> I'm your narrator, the tale giver. The tale giver, seriously? Someone must have a foul sense of humor. But we're not serving up chickens or turkeys. No, instead we've got four tales of horror that may curdle your spine and enhance your cholesterol numbers. Ready to be served to you on a platter that would make for any... <coughs> Put his gloves away. That precious and beautiful. So let's meet our actors. Now that you have met our minions of destruction and chaos, let's begin. First up on the menu is Spawn of the Subhuman. Actors, to your mics. I was late. It's because I took so much time reading the notices in the paper this morning. Oh, what 
Lord, they superb. Excellent. The audience was quite nice to me last night. I extremely appreciate it, but um, I didn't expect such fun reports from the press. Didn't I tell you before the concert that you did it? Today, my dear, you are recognized as the outstanding soprano of the nation. You've had a lot of faith in me, haven't you, Michael? Well, offhand, I'd say I have, yes. You spent a lot of money to make me a success. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll collect every cent of it back if we get as good houses as we had last night. Michael? Yes, darling. Do you feel, well, uh, rather strange? Strange? No, dear, why? Something is going to happen. What makes you say that? I don't know. I'm feeling an impending danger. Just seem to come over me all of a sudden. Danger? What possible danger do you mean? I don't know, but I've had this feeling before. It's like, like someone has spread a shroud down over this airplane. Yeah. Now that's a peculiar way to talk about it. It's the same sort of feeling I had that day Stephen disappeared. Stephen, how? Yeah. You know, I was riding in my car that day. I'd been to a matinee with several of my friends. We had a glorious time. I was quite happy, so I drove out to the country with the top end in my car. The wind was blowing against the car, just as it's blowing against the plane now. And the sun was glistening on the bright metal of the car, just as it's glistening on the wind right oh, there. Please don't think of that now. Oh, it was a lovely day. My heart was very light. I was happy. Thrillingly happy. Stephen and I would be married within a week. Adela, please. For no reason at all. And that strange feeling. It just came out of nowhere and settled down around me like a, a huge cloth when it covered the body of someone who had just died. Talk that way, though. It was the strangest feeling I'd ever experienced. Terrible. It gave me a feeling that a hundred thousand evil spirits were racing at a maddening pace behind me, car, trying to catch up with me, clutch me in their bony, fiendish hands. That was so long ago. Five years. So long ago. Oh, seems like yesterday. Then, when I speeded up the car, something began to pound in my ears. It's pounding there now, Michael. It's pounding there Adela, now. Please. I drove, the more that evil shroud hung over me. I gave the car more gas, and more, and more, and more, and then... When they found you in the wreckage, they thought you were dead. I couldn't make the curve. The motor had reached full speed. I could think of but one single danger, the invisible danger that raced there behind me, striving to catch me in its hold. But there's, there was no one. Nothing. Oh, but there seemed to be. And what was so strange? All of a sudden, that bright day vanished. Just vanished. Clouds came out of nowhere and hid the sun from sight. Darling, I, I better pull down the shade. Why, wait, wait a minute. Look. Look outside. Clouds were flying below them. And they completely blotted out the sun. The sun will be out in a minute. It's just like that day. Clouds hiding the sun. Just like they did that day. Oh, it's just a coincidence. Yeah. Eerie clouds. Thunder by loud bursts of thunder. And... Oh, Michael, what does it mean? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just a thunderstorm. I little go up and fly above. Why didn't he go above the storm when he saw it? Oh, I don't know. Because he didn't see it, that's why. Certainly he did. No! Well, it came up, just like that day five years ago. I don't know what it came up before the pilot was even aware of. Oh, nonsense. It wasn't nonsense five years ago. First the cloud, then the thunder, then it began to rain. Well, look for yourself. It's not raining now. It's nothing but an electrical storm. See? We're going above it. Oh, Michael, I'm frightened. There's nothing to be frightened about. Well, look. There's the sun again. It was all so strange. That feeling? The clouds hiding behind the sun? Sure. But no rain. 
Mr. Brock. Oh, Michael. Oh, darling, it's just the pilot talking to us over the talkback system. Uh, push that button right there so I can answer her. Mr. Brock, Miss Rose? Yes, pilot, what is it? Don't be alarmed about the storm. We're above it now. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, just an electrical storm, isn't it? No, sir. It's more than that. It's raining cats and dogs down there. Nothing can harm us up here. You remember, don't you? I never saw Stephen Wilder again after that experience I had five years ago. Yes, yes, I remember. Another one I never saw him again. He just disappeared. Oh, please, God, don't think about it anymore today. You're tired. Perhaps a little rest will do you good. <laughs> oh, yes, you're right. I am tired. I'll just lie back and relax then. Honestly, sweet, there's nothing to be worried about. We just happened to run into a storm and you thought about an old experience of yours. I wonder, Michael. I wonder if we did just happen to run into a How in the world did we ever come to be in the air with a creature like that? We have a regular pilot 
when we landed at Santella, I saw him climb down out of the cabin. So did I. But I never did see them again before we took off. And naturally, their back was to me when I gave them the go-ahead signal. Oh, Michael. Michael, now what? Oh, lad. He's bringing the plane down. Oh, Michael. We're on the ground. An absolutely perfect landing. Why is unlocking the door now? What's he going to do? Just take it easy. Don't get excited. Whatever you do, don't run or make a fast movement. Don't let him know you're afraid of him. He's just standing there, looking at us. Whatever you do, don't let him know you're afraid of him. You don't have to be afraid of me. Michael! That, that creature talked. Of course I talk. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're a couple of fools, Adela. It's just the pilot playing a trick on us, dressed up in a monkey suit. There is no trickery. I am not your original pilot. What? I joined you at Centella where I came to meet you for Dr. Luther. Dr. <coughs> Dr. Luther? Yes, she's waiting for me. Come, follow me. Spit Come on, you better follow him. Here's a daughter now. Oh, Stefan. I see you brought our visitors. Yes, Dr. I directed you. Welcome, Adela Rose, and welcome to our lovely, lovely home. I say, look here. And welcome to you, Mr. Brock. I'm so sorry that you will be of no assistance to me. However, you may be interested in what I have planned. Now, listen here, Dr. Ruther. I want to know what this is all about. And you will learn what it is all about without delay, I assure you. Come, Stefan, don't be so inhospitable. Show our guests into the laboratory. Sit down over here, my dear. Over there, Mr. Rock. Dr. Luther, I demand an explanation. Where are we? Why have you brought us here? You are too full of questions, Mr. Rock. I've already told you I'm about to show you why I brought you here. Here. High in these mountains. Secretly, I've been working for five years, experimenting, testing, trying to accomplish what everyone said was utterly impossible. And I had I told them anything about it, which of course I didn't. Here, instead, I came and built this laboratory. You see, it's fully equipped and modern in every detail. Now look here, Dr. Luther. During those five years, I trained Stefan here. I believe you will agree my training has been successful. You see now an almost full-grown gorilla behaving like a human, acting like a human, even talking like a human. I've been very kind to you, haven't I, Stefan? Yes, Dr. Luther. Of course you have been kind. Yes. Just so. Scientists back in your world, my dear Miss Rose, will tell you that it is impossible to completely train a gorilla. And that's the second point in which I'm proving in one. Stefan, sing for us. Yes, Doctor. Santochia, Santochia. Doesn't he have an excellent voice? <laughs> Michael, did you hear that? Impossible. Sing again, Stefan. Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. You see? Soon he will be world famous, and I shall travel with him, take him to the four corners of the earth, and show people how well my gorilla is too. Oh, Michael, I can't believe it. That's Stefan Wilder's poem. Can't be. Ah, but it is. Yes. <laughs> now I remember. Now I know who you are, Dr. Luther. Stephen Wilder had an appointment with me that day he disappeared five years ago. I can't forget all about it. I just now remembered. So, that's what happened to Stephen Wilder. You kidnapped him, brought him here, and you... Oh, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> I brought him here to do what others said could never be done. 
When I chloroformed him five years ago and brought him here, I thought I was ready. But my gorilla wasn't. So I had to wait. Three months ago, I performed the operation. Operation? I removed the vocal cords from the man and grafted them into the gorilla. Oh, this is ridiculous. A thing like that can't be done. Oh, surely you don't deny the proof I've just given you, Mr. Brock. Stefan, sing. <laughs> you recognized that voice, Miss Rhodes, the moment you heard it, because you had sung opera with Mr. Wilder so much. Well, listen to what he sang to exercise his voice. Don't you both realize what I have here? The secret of untold wealth. Why, besides knowing how to train this ferocious and morose type of animal, besides knowing how to transfer human vocal folds successfully, I have something I can exhibit to the world to prove my knowledge. Think. Think of the fortune I can amass, because people will pay immense sums to see and hear my singing gorilla. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, I say. Why have you brought me here? Surely you could have spared me this. I will tell you why, Miss Rhodes. If you and Mr. Brock will just step over the, the only place we're going to step is out of this place. You will do as I ask. Step on. These people are not to leave. Very well, Dr. Luther. Over here, if you please. Here. This plate glass. Look into the next room. Another gorilla. Yes. Isn't it a fine specimen? Fine specimen. Yes. She. She. What? <gasps> no. You're not planning. <laughs> I've trained her very carefully. She was so much more responsive than the male. Now that she's able to obey me, I'm quite ready for the rest. My plans for her. Oh no, no! Oh, you can't! I, I won't let you! I'll say she can't. Neither of you will be able to prevent it. Soon, soon I'll tour the world with the most amazing exhibition on earth a male and a female gorilla singing all the world famous operas. Look here, you. Wait a minute. I just happened to think of something, Doctor. Yes. Do you remember the day Senator Wilder had an appointment with you five years ago? Yes, certainly I remember. Mm -hmm. I've been planning to obtain possession of him so I could bring him here. I was most pleased when he called and asked for an appointment. But he didn't tell you why he was calling upon me? Why? No. No, he didn't. He came to you, Dr. Luther, because he was losing his voice. Wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm the only one who told about it. It had been worrying him for a long time. You see, the more he sang, the worse his voice became. He was gradually losing it. But that's impossible. Do you think so, Doctor? You're a specialist on that subject. That's why you were coming to me that day. No. No, you must be wrong. After all the work I've done. Your gorilla will lose his voice, Dr. Luther. And I assure you, before you will do anything to me, I'll see to it that my voice is ruined too. He won't. He can't. He's an excellent voice. Excellent. Yes. Yes, of course he is. We've worked together. I've trained him. His voice can't go bad on me now. Not now when it's finally Oh, you'll see, Dr. Luther. No, you're wrong. You're mistaken. He'll sing all right. He won't lose his voice. Will you, Stefan? No. no, of course not. You're an excellent voice, Stefan. Sing. Sing, Stefan, and show them. Sakauchia, Sakauchia. See? Did you hear that? Beautiful quality. Stephon, you, you 
devil, after all I've done, after all my work, this is what I get as a reward? I sacrifice everything. Position, my career, all of my money. And this is what happens? Well, there's one way, Stefan. Get back to Della. She's got a gun. No. No, Dr. Luther, don't. The bullet hit the beast. But look at him. Stop. Stop. No, no, Stefan. Now, no. No. Stefan, let go of me. Stefan, no. No. about to the voice of a generation. <laughs> Don't play God, kids. You rarely outlive your creation. Now on to our next course. We have the shadow people. No, we're not talking about politicians. Though they do seem to be the demon spawns of Satan. We are talking about murderous things in the dark that are coming to get you when the lights go out. Like now. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. Just setting the mood. Actors, to your mics. Elaine, have you, have you been, I mean, have you seen anything else since? You spoke to me last. No, no, I haven't. Ever since Mother died, nothing's happened. Well, I only hope that we. Ah! What's that? It came from upstairs. Come on. Oh. You don't. Think I don't know what to think. I only hope oh, that we're. David, David, anything's happened to him? We'll find out in a moment. There's no light on in this room. You wait here, Elaine. Where's Where's the light? Uh, over, over to your left. What's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? Father's dead, Elaine. <laughs> Somewhere along the line of your life, you've met them. You have come into contact with the shadow people. When did we first discuss it? Oh yes, Brian and Elaine and I. It was in my apartment. There were only one light on in the entire place. Oh, what's wrong? Elaine, what's the matter? Well, oh, it, it's silly, I, I know, but I thought I saw something in that doorway over there. Where? Over there, right over there. Where are you going, David? Over to the archway. And I've seen it several times. 
see this thing. Well, we started about six weeks ago. You were in Detroit on business, Brian. Mom and Dad were on vacation. And I was in the house by myself, in the library. There was only one light on. I sat in the chair beneath it reading. Several times, I thought that something was watching me. I felt that there was someone in the room with me standing right in back of me. Every so often, I glanced back over my shoulder, but there seemed to be nothing there. There was an old man I knew of, Dr. Hesodus. I had heard that he knew quite a good deal about the supposed supernatural manifestations which had taken place in the world. I went to him to see if he knew anything that might explain the events of the story Elaine had told us. Yes, my good sir, what do you wish? I have an appointment with the Dr. Hesodus. Oh, yes, yes. He mentioned something about it. You are Mr. Drake? Yes. If you'll come inside, please. Oh, thank you. Dr. Heselius is in the study. Please. Doctor, a visitor for you. Oh, yeah. Bring him in. Uh, you may go now. Yes, doctor. Mr. Drake? Yes. Uh, sit down, please, in that chair over there. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, what is the nature of your visit to me? Well, I understand, Dr. Silius, that you have a great deal of knowledge of the supposed supernatural manifestations which have occurred on the earth. Great knowledge, Mr. Drake? No, hardly that. I have only scratched the surface in my years of study. And perhaps I can help you. Then again, perhaps I cannot. Well, may I tell you a story? By all means, my good sir. All right. Now, this didn't happen to me, Doctor, but to my fiance. It seems that about six weeks ago, when she was alone. Well, Doctor, I see. It's a straight tale you tell. I'm fully aware of that, Dr. Silvis. You say she seemed to hear whispered voices? Yes, that's what she says. I see. A moment, please. I have a book in my files. Oh, yes. Here it is. I believe this is a one. Yes. Perhaps I'm may be able to help you after all. Let me see. This is a very ancient book, Mr. Drake. I seem to remember. Yes. Here's an account of a happening such as you relate. 
And we shall live on the earth, and they shall not see us. Yes, just yes. being foretold by the ruler of the darkness. They who live by night, and the child of the sleep of darkness, shall never know that we walk with God, that we watch them, that we wait for our chance. Oh, no. the shadow people. I know I've read something similar to the story you've told me, Mr. Drake. Not very serious. What can we do? Well, give me a little time. Let me see if I can find any more references to these people of the darkness. One more thing, Mr. Drake. Yes? Be sure that your fiancé is never left alone at night. Be sure that there is some living thing, animal or human, which accompanies her every second of the night. For she is in danger, Mr. Drake. A terrible danger. That night, the night of the day I had seen Asilius, Elaine's mother died. She died in her sleep. When she failed to appear for breakfast, Elaine's father went upstairs to see what was wrong. When he entered her room, he discovered her body. The family doctor couldn't explain it, for Elaine's mother had been in perfect health. A few weeks later, I was out of the house, spending the weekend with them. I glanced at the clock on the mantel, and it showed a light. I can't understand why Brian hasn't returned from town. Yeah. He said he had too much to work to catch up on. He told us this morning he might be late. Well, 11 o'clock. I'm going upstairs. Glad to see you out, David. Good seeing you again. It's, it's a pleasure to be here, sir. Well, don't stay up too late. See you both in the morning. Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mr. Davis. He isn't the same, David. Ever since Mother died, he just hasn't been the same. I didn't realize it until tonight. I only hope he'll start living again. Ever since she died, it seems as if a part of him died with her. I mean, have you been... I mean, have you seen anything else since you last spoke to me? No, I haven't. Ever since Mother died, nothing's happened. Well, I only hope that... <laughs> it came from upstairs. Come on! I don't know what to think. I only hope that... Oh, David, David, if anything's happened to him... We'll see you in a moment. There's no light in his room. You wait here, Elaine. Where's the... Where, where's the light? Over to your left. David, what's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? Your father's dead. <laughs> second look for me to know that he was dead. I had switched off the light and walked back into the hallway to tell Elaine what had happened. And then from the room there came an eerie, quiet laughter. In the darkness of that room was some unknown evil power. The voice itself was unearthly. There was no substance to it. It sounded as if, as if it came from darkness itself.
he came out of their house. Miss Davis, can you tell me just when you saw the first manifestation? The night Brian was in Detroit. Now, Miss Davis, you have seen this apparition in the company of other people. Is that correct? Yes. The night at David's apartment. All right. Now, I'll tell you what I think. You are in deadly danger, Miss Davis. These beings want to claim you. So far, they have had no success. Only in the darkness do they have power. Little by little, step by step, they have been removing the obstacles in their way to reaching you. First your mother, and then your father, Miss Davis. Both died in the same fashion. In the darkness, death struck at them. Now tell me, do you feel their presence here in this room as I talk to you? Yes. Turn out the lights, Brian. Stand by the switch, if you please, Brian. If anything happens, turn the lights back on. All right. Dr. Silas, I don't think that's... Do you want me to continue working with you? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, then. Brian, turn off the lights. Yes, doctor. The room is now in darkness, Miss Davis. Do you feel or see anything? Do you see anything? Yes. Doctor, I don't think we Be can... quiet, you fool! I know what I'm doing! In front of me, the darkness gathering together into a huge, terrible Miss Davis, are you all right? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. And just as she said, the darkness, uh, I saw it form into something, too. So did I. What are we going to do? Uh, at the present moment, I, I don't know. <laughs> but this much I do know. You must leave this house immediately. You must try to get out of their reach. I don't know if that is possible. I hope it is. I shall have to return to my home. I must learn if there is some manner by which we can defeat these creatures. For the moment, leave this house. Dispose of it in any manner you may see fit, but leave this house. Silius called me and asked if I'd come in to see him. David, I'm glad you're here. Anything new, Doctor? Mm, yes and no. You realize, of course, that this spiritual manifestation is not new, that it has gone on for centuries. No, I wasn't aware of that. It's true, David. Uh, Dear Maupassant wrote what was supposedly a fiction story about the manifestation, David. He called it Zahorla. However, according to the information here on my desk, it was taken from an actual case history. Of course, he embroidered the story, added a few touches to something he didn't realize actually existed. But have you found anything with which we can fight them? Everything depends upon an answer I received from a colleague of mine in Paris, Dr. Henri Renan. I dispatched a telegram to him last night. Well, why hasn't he answered by now? There are certain things that must be done. It will take a few days, I'm afraid. We have to wait, David. There's nothing else we can do. 
In the next few days, the house was sold and Brian and Elaine moved into a newer, more modern apartment. As Elias said, it might take a few days for them to build up their power. I spent the nights at the new house. The lights were left on and I watched for any unusual occurrence. In the daytime, I returned to my apartment to get some sleep. About four days after Elaine and Brian moved into their new apartment, I was at home when Asilius phoned me. Hello? David? Yes, Dr. Asilius. I hate to tell you this, David. What's the matter? What's wrong? Say by a step ahead of me, David. I just received word that Renard died, or I was killed. It's the very moment I sent the telegram to him. Step by step, they had outwitted us. For they had anticipated every move we made. Even Dr. Asilius was at a loss as what to do. He agreed to meet me at the Davis house. What did you want to see us about, Dr. Asilius? Did you find out anything more? I'm sorry to say that I haven't. The moment I am at a complete loss. I don't know what to do. But what did you want to see us about this evening? Mainly to check to see if anything else has happened. Miss Davis, have you seen or heard anything? Not in the house. Only in my dreams. Your dreams? Yes. When I go to sleep at night. <coughs> in my dreams. In the darkness. I see them. And it's grown worse. Much worse. It was hoping that it would not to progress so far. There has been no disturbance in this house, but now they disturb your sleep. Now you must stay awake for as long as you can. I want the three of you to move into my house. Perhaps that will give you more protection. At night, we moved over to Hasilius' house. Perhaps Elaine would have more protection there. From there, we might be able to devise some plan of action, some way to beat those things. For a few days, things were quiet. The shadow people seemed to have withdrawn. For a while, I thought that we might have succeeded in thwarting their purpose. Elaine no longer complained of troubled sleep. But that condition lasted for a few days only. About ten days later, they made themselves known and felt again. That night, we were in the study when suddenly Hesilius whirled around and said, Elaine, what are you looking at? Outside the house, right where the light leaves off. I see them. She's right. I can see them too. What should we do, Doctor? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? There's nothing he can't do. We can't just keep can't do anything, Brian. No. Don't you understand that they have us at their mercy? Greatest man of my field was on Rio now. If he could do nothing against him, what do you think we can do? He's right, Brian. There's nothing we can do. As long as the house remains lighted, just so long as they remain outside. If the lights were to... <laughs> that sounds like... The night father was killed. The same sound. We heard the same sound. The lights! Doctor, where are the lights? <laughs> Be quiet, please! I thought of this emergency. A candle. That's right, Miss Davis. As long as this burns, this one candle, will be safe. Because they cannot advance into the light. They are limited by the darkness. As long as the candle burns, they will have to remain outside of this room. Brian. Uh, I can't stand it. I'm getting out of here. Brian, come back. 
Don't be a fool. I'm going after him. Stay here. We can't just let him go. He won't have a chance. I doubt if he... <laughs> Miss Davis, I'm afraid your brother is dead. <laughs> you will be granted a brief break from the torment in the form of a 10 minute intermission. Use the restroom or visit the concession stand if you wish, but make sure you are back and ready in 10 minutes, or there will be consequences. <laughs>
Are you going to stay?
You'll be like, where's the bridge? I must jump off it now. <laughs> I know I was when I was on Earth. That was before humanity figured out not to wipe with poison ivy. <coughs> we learned quickly. Actors, to your mics. Let's get going with <coughs> mother-in-law. I mean, uh, well, you're my wife now, Ella. That proves what I think of you now, don't it? I guess it does. You and Mom get along fine. <laughs> Will this be a surprise to her? Well, here's the house. What do you think of it? it it's all right. Well, in we go. <laughs> Will Ma's eyes pop when she sees you? <laughs> pop right out, I'll bet you. Now, come on, Mom. Open up. Got a surprise for you. Where you been, son? Where are you? Oh. Surprise, Mom? 
Meet Ella. Jay, you drop home, uh, woman. <laughs> <laughs> when she said that word, right from that minute, I knew I hated her. And that's the way it works from then on. I wasn't Joe's wife to her, but a woman, a stranger in her house. And it was her house, and in everything. Nothing Jerry's, everything hers. Mom, can I use your car and take Ella riding? Mom, mind if, I plant, mind if I Ella plant some roses in your garden? Mom, is it all right if Ella uses some of your towels to make colors? That's the way it was. Hers, hers, everything hers. All I had was Jay, and he wasn't much. You can't, you can't blame me. You hear me? You can't, you can't blame me for not standing it. Oh, my life, I had nothing. And at last I was married, and I still had nothing. Her house, her car, her money, her son. I couldn't stand it, I tell you. So I killed. I'm going to do it. It's just that I want to sit here on top of the ladder and think and talk about everything for a little while. It's the last chance I'll get. So, like I said, I killed him. Oh, not right there. I stood for it all for weeks and months. But all the time, inside of me, something was talking. That was soft like. And then louder, and louder until my head was filled with it. Louder and louder until I couldn't stand it no more. Louder and louder until I said, yes! Yeah, I'll do it, yes! Yes, everything in your mind, and everything. I always wanted it that way. It had to be that way. Here, in this basement, that's where it happened. Jay went to work. I came down here. Oh, it wasn't very hard to do what I had to do. I remember every minute of it so well. I called her. And she came down in the basement. You called me, Ella? Yes, I called you. What's the matter? Somebody took the lid off the sewer down here. For land sakes alive now, who would have done that? Heavy iron cover like that? Jay wouldn't have done it. Is it deep down there? Of course it's deep. Tate a sewer anyway. It covers an old well that this building was built over. Oh. And now what are you owing about? I heard my son Jay tell you the very same thing weeks ago. Yes, I, he did tell me. Funny, I forgot. Oh, look. What? Down in the well. Look. Well, I don't see nothing. What? Oh! It's your well, isn't it, Ma? Ma, your well. Everything's yours. So stay in it. Stay in it, Mama. Stay in it. <laughs> your well, Mama, but everything else is mine now. Everything mine. And that's the way it was. Easy. Too easy. Jay came home and he said, Say, Ella, where's Mom? I don't know. She wasn't here when I got back from the store. I must have gone out. Oh. Well, she'll be back. But it, Leave it to she Mom. didn't come back. How could she? Jay went to the police. They came around. They asked questions. They were there. And nothing happened. It was as easy as that. Why do I keep hearing that in my head? Why? Why? I'm gonna die. The rope around my neck. Just a little bit longer than talking. Just a little. She was gone. And I had her house. And her son. And then I didn't want him. Always talking about her, morning and night. Mama this and mama that. Mama, oh, 
always did this, this way, and that, that way, until he would just make me sick just to look at him. Mama, mama, I wanted to forget, 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 and how could I forget with his fat lips saying, mama, 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 and then one day I got an idea. <laughs> there was more room under that eye. Yes, that was it. I'll free her. Now I get free of him. So the house quick. Get away. Oh, we far away. Yes, that was it. A free woman. And with my looks and all that money. <laughs> oh, would I have a time. I planned everything. Told the neighbors Jay was going on a trip. Yeah, a long trip. Give me time to say everything. Oh, I planned it good. I see Jay written in the Santa Fe joining our town. Oh, I tell you, it was perfect. He came home that night. And I had a little joy in his mind. Anybody home? I'm always home. <laughs> you said that just like Mama used to. Uh, did I? Well, say, that reminds me. I got a new detective agency working on the case. They think that maybe she lost her memory somehow. You know, like you read about. And All right! All right. <laughs> But Ella... Sit down and eat your supper. Want it to get cold? I don't see why you don't want to talk about finding Mama. Sit down and eat your supper. You'll find your Mama. You think so, Ella? Sure. I say that's... Good hearing you say that. Find my Mama. That's not my sure. He sat down to eat. I made him do supper. Why not? It lasts And then it happened. We were sitting there eating when there was a knock on the door. Now, who did that be? How should I know? Get up and answer it. Oh, yeah. A peddler, I'll bet you. Nobody here. Huh? Nobody here. Then shut the door and come back and finish your supper. Funny. I heard nothing playing, didn't you? Kids playing jokes. Go on, eat. I want you to help me fix something in the basement. Fix what? You'll see. Finish your eating first. Okay. Those crazy kids. I'll get it, Ella. No. Sit where you are. I'll go. Ella, wait. Wait for what? Listen. The knocking. How funny it sounds. Those kids. But, but it's from the basement door. No. Well, I better go see who No! Jay, don't open that door. Well, I don't see why not. Don't! Somebody's knocking. I gotta see who it is. Jay, leave the door closed! Well, why? What's the matter with you? I gotta open up. I gotta see who it... No! Jay! No! Oh, no! Mama? It was her, all right. Mm -hmm. There she was. Eyes glaring, dirty gray old hair plastered wet around the face. Standing there. I could see her with my own eyes. And yet she was dead, I tell you. Dead. 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 Jay didn't know that. No, he took that dead thing by the arm and let her in the room and sat down. Oh, Mama, Mama, you did come back. I knew you would. We both knew it, didn't we, Ella? Now, tell us, Mama, where have you been? Why'd you go? Yeah, and why come back this funny way, the back way up the basement stairs? Why, Mama? I, 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 Mama, you, you're sick. Oh, Ella, look, and she's dripping wet, and it ain't rained in days. Ella, quick. Take her upstairs and put her to bed. Yeah, and, and maybe you better sleep with her tonight. And keep her warm. Ella, why are you looking so funny? Ella, you fainted. <laughs> Ella, why did you faint? Why? Sure, I fainted. Me sleep with that. Me keep that 
warm? Oh, no. I didn't wake up till the next morning. Jay was leaving for work. He told me she was sleeping in her room to take good care of her when she woke up. Then he went away, happy his mama was back. When he was gone, I sat down there in the kitchen and waited. I waited a long time, listening, listening. The soft hands crawled slowly around and around. But there was only the sound of its ticking. Nothing from the stairs. Nothing from the stairs. Now to bed with you. In the morning, I'll call the doctor. Ella, you take Mama upstairs to bed. And this time, you'll be sure to sleep with her. You know how scared she is of thunder. Now, go on now. She's so good.
I know, come to think of it, I'll go fetch the doctor right now. I can't take any more chances. Ella, you take Mama right upstairs and put her to bed. Lie down with her and keep her warm till I get back from Dr. Then he was gone. Listen, I'll go away. 
You hear me? <laughs> Don't go away. This will be your house and, and everything in it. Hear me? All yours again. And Jay, I leave him too. I won't take anything with me. I'll just go right away out into the rain. If I do that, if I never come back, that's going to make everything all right, won't it? No, well, you don't have to answer. I know it's all right with you. <laughs> you see, I was going to kill myself. Still standing up here, broke around my neck. But I won't have to do that now, will I? As long as I'm going away, get the roof off. I'll go. You'll see me go. Maybe you're so tired. I can't seem to. Mrs. Kruger, what are you going to do? You're, you're not going to climb the ladder. No. No, stay on. Stay on. I tell you, don't come any closer. I can't stand you coming closer. Stay away. The ladder. The ladder will fall. The rope is still around my neck.
If you are clapping, congratulations, the demon got his horns. <laughs> are you ready? I can't hear you. I said, are you ready? Yes! And let's get ready to scream! This horrific tale is called Zombies in a Trailer Park. Actors, to your mics and begin! <coughs> it was a warm summer morning, Thursday, June 28th, 1.30 a.m. to be precise. A light breeze was blowing through giving our protagonist, Bob Weaver, a feeling of relaxation after a long, crappy day at work that resulted in him giving the finger to his boss and walking out the door. He was having a smoke in his chair, moon high in the sky, while he let out a sigh with a bottle by his side. <sighs> what a lousy, flipping day. If it hadn't been for that idiot office manager, oh, man. If it hadn't been for Delilah, I would have knocked him on his backside. <sighs> Telling me the new stoner kid who just happens to be his son will go higher in the company than I will? <laughs> Sanctimonious clown. The business will go down like the Titanic with him in charge. Oh well, not my problem anymore. 20 flipping years and it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> Just then he noticed someone coming up the driveway. He even said so. Now hurry up, check it out. Who's that coming up the driveway? Looking all mucked up. Hey buddy! Buddy! What you got going on? He wasn't responding except for grunts as he came up the road, dragging one of his legs behind him. When he got into the street light, Bob saw something he couldn't believe. A man's face was half gone, his shirt ripped open and part of his gut hanging out. A zombie? That can't be real. It's 2 a.m. and it's not Halloween yet. I better take my gun. He ran inside to snatch up his gat. You could hear him behind the door. Flipping Flip hell. Where'd I put my keys at? Damn it, hell, come on! Oh, here we are. Keep it together. Keep it straight. Must get gun. Must shoot zombie. Stay focused. Bob may have known, but time wasn't on his side. And zombie was making its way to Bob's house quickly. Poor zombie. <laughs> so when Bob came out, the zombie was at the bottom of his steps. Oh, crap! He quickly raised his 44 Magnum and shot the zombie point blank in the throat covering his head from his torso. I got him! Holy monkey moose knuckles, I got him! When the shot rang out, the park came to life. It's not a quiet gun. What the hell's going on out here? Who's shooting out here? What's happening? I shot a zombie! A real flipping zombie! What the hell are you talking about, a zombie? Look, damn it! All I see is a stump where his head used to be. Give me that shovel, Bill. Bill hands him the shovel and Bob shoves it ungraciously under the zombie and flips it over. Everyone ducks in to take a look. Ripped clothes, guts splayed open with intestine parts hanging out. It was a grotesque mess. And everyone gave a collective. Yeah. This is a nasty mess, Bob. How do you know it was a zombie? Well, he was coming up the drive and wouldn't respond when I called out. Then I saw him in the light. I've seen enough zombie movies to know what to do when I see the entrails on display and the guy's not on PCP. Where do you think he came from? Well, it's probably from the campground up the road. Yeah, if it was from town, we'd be hearing the screams and shots from other forks up the road. I expect we'll be hearing that shortly, though. This can't be the only one. That campground was more occupied than moonlight ground on the barnyard. As the trailer park finished waking up and checking out the horror, one of our Fine characters looked down the drive and noticed something. Hey guys, uh, we got company. 
Everyone turn to see it gasped. <gasps> see? Uh, this one had no arm, and his leg was badly chewed away. Go get your guns, everyone. It's going to get ugly quick. Bring, bring, bring everything you got, people. That means ammo, too. And keep your head on a swivel. Play it safe. If you got protection, use it. I got mine. <laughs> Damn it, woman. Let's wait ten minutes first. Uh, I need full body protection from you. <laughs> You want anything besides that? Oh, I got some fun. See you in a few. <laughs> As everyone returned to their homes to get armed up or to barricade themselves in, because, you know, some people don't think too well. Oh, let's be real, people, their trailers are made like a Walmart Thursday special on a Tuesday. If you think anything here is standing out to the zombie apocalypse, you're as brain dead as the walking corpses. Anyway, Bob was eager to check out what's coming. Did he find a straggler? A dead straggler. How you doing, buddy? Good night for a walk? The zombie grunted and groaned, then lunged for Bob as he put one in the head again. It fell. He smiled. He always had dreams like this. They always ended the same. <laughs> now it's time to look down the road and see if more was incoming. He saw three more close by with half a dozen behind them. Little did he know there were twelve more just behind the curve. But then they put that light there last year. Guys, guys, hurry up! We got problems coming! Our main characters came to the center. Five people out of fifteen trailers. Several were lined up on the last week. That's it. You can hear stuff being done inside the other trailers to barricade. Wasn't going to help them. Cowards. Glad you guys didn't more so. Yeah, no. If this goes like most of those zombie flicks, I won't want any other way. How about what I need? How about y'all? I got my Tech 9 AR and Glock. What the heck did you do, Sarah? Ready to go stall like Arnold from one of his movies? Commando, to be precise. And yes, I've always <laughs> wanted to fight off an army. Guys, we've got company coming. And get organized and loaded up. Yeah, I do seem to be taken to this like Bill Clinton to Epstein Island. How long have you been running gang alive? A lot longer than they kept him alive. Hey, that's my line. I wish you'd drop it there. They sure did. Six feet under. Everybody's a comedian. So, Bob, you want to do some bobbing and weaving? No. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that joke for ages. Thanks for the 3,000 rendition. I just hope to see 3,015. Okay, get focused, people. We need to watch the hedges and the tree line. No telling where they might start coming from. See if you can move some cars to give us some blockage. Yeah, with only five of us, this isn't going to take long. Hey, how come we don't get out our phones and send it out or, or get the cars and get out of here? Because you fools the state plane. We don't have the time or the technical goodies to make that happen. <coughs> So if you'd like to become a member and or make a healthy donation to make this theater the stuff of wonders, just make your check out to Ellensburg Theater Company, Post Office Box 1324, Gold Beach, Oregon, 97444. Can we get on with it, please? Yeah, I'm right. So, are we going to split up or stay right here? We're going to stay right here. The trailers will offer us cover and a time delay, and the barricaders will keep the zombie hordes. We're them than us. Wait, what? Before you do your thing and have more fun, we need to do a flashback. A flashback? Yes. <clears throat> You've got to continue to pad the runtime a little bit longer. Apparently the guy who wrote this just wants to see a lot of zombies die in this play and didn't pad it with enough dialogue. But there's only two zombies dead. That's why he's putting all the puffery at the beginning. The quicker that happens, the quicker we can move on to the zombie death extravaganza. Why do we have to be made to suffer for a 30 minute runtime? Hey, I'm not the writer, I'm just the tail giver. More like the tail taker, me, yeah. Don't give me any of that sass. You've got a show to do, now get to the flashback. Fine, who wants it? Not me, I, I just wanna kill zombies. 
I'm not here for this overly dramatic verbal vomit. Me neither. <laughs> well, who gets the flashback, slave driver? Sarah and Amanda. Why us? Why well, didn't she slap you upside the head the other night when you guys were arguing about Godzilla vs. Robocop? Seems like good content. Just because we were having a ridiculous argument and I have a sense of humor. Is that what you call it, a sense of humor? Godzilla might be a badass monster, but I want Robocop for the win. Robocop sucks. He couldn't eat Godzilla's lunch. Of course he could. Godzilla could eat 25 blue whales and 50 Oprahs a day. Now that's just disgusting. Godzilla munching on Oprah isn't an image I want in my head. <laughs> you sicko. Well, that was short. Is that it? Anything else to be included in there? No, oh, I think we've gotten enough after this. Okay. By the way, Amanda is a quarter. Get a sense of humor. How dare you! You want to see that image in your head, too? It's more entertaining than a frigid ass stocked with ice cream at the North Pole. Anyways, shall we move on? Yes, yes let's get on with it! Okay, okay. You've got three zombies headed up the driveway in a minute. You have to do something. Right. right. All right. Bill, Leslie, and Amanda, get him. We'll back you up. Roger that. Roger the road. Okay, people. Move lock your life with hands on it. It's a good thing we suspended the verbal diarrhea. Because guess who's finally come to dinner? We have three zombies coming up the entryway to our delightful little park. Bill shot one zombie three times. What a mess. Looks like my ex-wife's meatloaf. Desi fired twice. And Amanda fired four times. Four times. I was nervous and bloodthirsty. We had to go through that flashback and it pissed me off. Okay, okay. Magnificent performance. Thanks, narrator. And back to the story. <clears throat> back to Bob, our leader. Check him on, reload. I'll go home and get my Viagra. Be back in a minute. Bill. You'll be the killjoy. We got zombies incoming again. This is no time to laugh. Get over it, Leslie. It's a helpful bit of comedic relief. Ugh. Six more already? They're not wasting any time. Nor is the writer. I want more killing and less talking. Glad to be getting it. I bet the audience is happier. A few sound effects and only five imaginary zombies on the ground. We need more. Yeah, enough of this happy-go-plunk nonsense. I, we need more zombie murder. Be careful what you wish for, guys. You might just get it. Give the writer a drain of him. I'll bet he'll free flow from there. That's enough, Kitty. You've got it coming. Hold up, people. Time is of the essence. Kill them all! It's Smith and Weston sort of match. Amen to that. As the next zombie wave started their assault, the gunfire came out like gangbusters. Pop, 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 over and over again. Zombies splatter left and right. Everyone was shooting everything and the bodies were hitting the ground. Every reload was coming at breakneck speed, trying to take out this next round of six. Who are you? What are you doing in here? Very restricted. Get out of here! What the... Please. Yeah. 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 Y
Titan Shaw. 